and i'm not really a big fan of how the da vinci layout is like a little it's a little rigid as compared to premiere yeah green is basically foreground yellow is background blue is mask da vinci resolve tracker is so much better like so so much better than after effects tracker it just is like a next level intelligence i feel uh, for magic mask and for tracking om namah shivaya good evening welcome back to in the code this is 18th October 2023, 3:53 p.m. This is a very unusual time for documentation, but thank God we now have a system and everything set up in a way that there's a little bit of traffic noise, but more or less it is fine. Like at any point in any point of time in the day, I can technically record a session. So I made yesterday's in the could edit the stable diffusion edit only using DaVinci Resolve, and there's a few things I've learned. Firstly, you will see that it's a multi-cam edit, right? So I recorded this. So you have your two clips here, camera one and camera two, the way you do it inside Premiere. Camera one is just your camera talking and camera two, if I, there's an open in timeline, okay? So what I've done here is I've added a fusion clip on this, uh, on top of it. And I'm gonna show that in point number two or three somewhere, where I've, how I've done this mask situation using fusion. So how do you make the multi-cam edit? You select these two, you come in here, you say right click and, new multi multi cam clip using this you give it a name over here you can select sequential and the important thing was angle sync this was in out or sound and sound here is pretty impressive like it just automatically detects where the sound is so you don't have to manually do that uh, so i'm going to come in here this is the multi cam clip that it generated i'm going to say right click create new timeline using selected clips just give it a timeline name or whatever now once you've come here uh, how you're gonna see like where your cameras and everything is so firstly you need to go into two camera view and right now i can see nowhere two camera view is it this one no so you want to shut your inspector and this is weird like this is one thing i was stuck for a while yesterday is when you shut the inspector you get this button here which takes you to two windows and then you can no but the moment i open inspector so <laughs> shut the inspector then you get the two windows long story short over here you want to come down and select multicam now you have both your angles here based on your two things okay so now in this edit here if you press one two let's say it's playing oh no sure good morning welcome back to the code this is october 17 2023 1159 a.m and old school kid this is october 17 2023 1159 a.m you see this was happening yesterday every single time because like there was a bit of a gap between the audios so we need to do something where the audio doesn't change and i think the way to do that is one of these things here so affect only i'm hovering over it doesn't quite show so now if i do this oh no sure good morning welcome back to the court this yes. is october 17 2023 and old school in the court documentation so now only the video gets cut the audio doesn't change what is it that's different with premiere here uh, in your keyboard shortcuts like over here if I want to change this selected one to because it's at one I want to change it to angle two I have to hold down alt and then press two so alt one and two will change it from the angles depending on number of angles but if you just press one or if you come here just press two it changes the camera angle and adds a cut there just a slightly different way of doing it but once you get used to it you get used to it this video by Jason Roberts video for money yeah. you're gonna find a link for that in the description Second, color correction of log footage. So let me take my, so this raw footage here. And uh, in my edit page, I'm gonna come in and drag this here. So it's in my timeline. I think it has to be in your timeline. Then you get it here. So this is how the footage was looking like log V2 using Filmic Pro. I'm gonna shut clips, get a little more space here. And I'm not really a big fan of how the Da Vinci layout is like a little it's a little rigid as compared to premiere like adobe's workspaces are very flexible you can just move things around here and there whatever you want to do da vinci is rigid in terms of like there's only so much you can move so anyways come here and say alt s i'm gonna add like a node a color corrector that's what it's called you can come in here right click add node corrector that's the same exact process okay so i'm gonna delete this and over here i just did i uh, there's so many controls here it's like you're giving you an entire spacecraft to run or fly and you have no idea what to do but here's what i did i added a curves over here and over here and like brought it a little in so just to add like your regular contrast so you hit ctrl d to mute this that was one thing that i did 
then I did Alt S to add one more and here I wanted to correct the skin so I went into this qualifier here and I clicked on the skin then you have to do Shift H nobody tells you these hotkeys I saw it in a video so once you do Shift H you get this and then you can like Lumetri's HSL panel you can increase your this thing and come in here and increase the denoise to make it like this way and basically all I want to do is like here vectorscope if you click these three buttons and you click this icon here and say show skin tone indicator that's going to be this line running here okay and then you just want to adjust the offset so with this selected you want to go in here to log wheels and offset you want to adjust this until this thing comes on your on that line and you can like bring it a little down so if i do a shift h now you see it added that little bit of redness you can say so by default this is a little yellow as that little redness you can make it a little more extreme if you want but that was that for skin and this log footage for some reason was very very blurred out so you'll see the difference right now if you come in here there is a sharp blur and sharpen and you want to go into sharpen and you want to take this radius down but like the more you take it down the more it starts to be like your photoshop camera or filter texture and clarity slider so just bring it like here and you're going to see a lot of difference right away and then you blend this this is for like blending in if you want softening and blending the edges together so if i do an alt d it will go from before to after so this is how i color corrected this log footage to something which is like a little bearable to use and the credit for this color correction was this video by Joris Hermans. Uh, this is where I learned a lot of things. Okay, that's that. Basics of nodes, yellow, green, and blue sockets. Casey Ferris. I by far am the most impressed by this creator. So very good videos you must check out. So a little bit about how nodes and work in Fusion, because editing and everything is fine. It's like something I'm just putting up with almost. But the the thing that I'm most interested in with Da Vinci is Fusion. So I'm going to select this fusion clip and bring it here. Mm, again, I'm going to run into the same problem where I don't quite know how to see what it is that I had done. So camera 2 and camera 1. Finally, I've done something to figure out where this is. So I think with this camera 2 selected, if I go into fusion, man, you still cannot see those nodes that I created to go into timeline and drag this video here. So with this here, I'm going to come into fusion color fusion so that's your media in media out this is what i had and i wanted to take this one which is on top and add it as like that mask situation there so how do you do it so one and two okay firstly we need gonna drag this in here so that's gonna come as media in and we need a rectangular mask for this right let me see what i can do here let me see if i can remember so i think it was just a called a rectangle rectangle thing here so you need to understand the basics of things here so there is yellow socket there is yellow line yellow socket there is green and then there is uh, blue so blue is for mask and green you will see when you add a merge node so if i bring this here yeah green is basically foreground yellow is background blue is mask this rectangle you can come in here and change things like you can add the corner radius and width and height you can change everything you want so i'm going to keep it like this here this i'm going to add into the mask for media 2 so now this if i put in one you're going to see this kind of a situation like mask situation and this we're going to merge with this one so now you have this and now if you take the merge and move it around you can move this thing here like you wanted but now I want to if I size this down this is gonna size with it so for that you have to come and fix the size of the rectangle to like show more of this so increase the width and the height and let's let's bring it down a little we're covering more and then for this part I'm gonna come in here and decrease the size so this goes down like this and then I added a drop shadow towards the end. So this selected drop shadow. 
and then you can't quite see it here because it's black in the background but it's there if I change the color to like white and strength hmm. so this right now is doing something weird because you, the merge node needs a background node so right now the background for the merge node is uh, media in that's why there's no drop shadow maybe there is drop shadow on the whole thing here like this whole thing is getting a drop shadow i think which is this one i'm still very new to figuring out uh, fusion nodes but so far here's where i've gotten so the way it happened here is there was media in one and background there was just a background going into like if i was to delete this then merge node just had a background going into the yellow socket and yellow if you remember i said that yellow is for background foreground is green and mask is blue so there was just a background node oh, what the hell that was plugged into the yellow part so now you get something like that and i am still not able to get this so maybe background you can take the alpha down yeah okay <laughs> so now you see your drop shadow i'm going to take the strength down the angle the distance and the blur so now we have a drop shadow behind magic mask workflow i'm going to show one part in the timeline for magic mask let's say i'm going to take a part you know i have this habit of doing my hands gesture situation until here and you take this little clip you say right click um open in fusion page okay so that does it now that's in the timeline that will become a fusion clip it's not become a fusion clip right click <sighs> reset fusion open fusion page there was a thing where you can make it a fusion clip that's what i had done but anyway let's say this is this way and uh, the magic mask situation had shown in the previous video as well but you just bring this here this is gonna get from here this is gonna go in as a merge node okay the over here we're gonna have this is gonna stay here for us to do the magic mask situation and here it will be at two so if i take the magic mask and now this is what i wanted to show like here you see the arms go away right so i'm gonna keep i'm gonna do it at the point where the arms are in the frame so i'm gonna come into magic mask and draw my magic mask this has to be no this had to be one yeah so we get that and we get the hand and a little bit of the mic and this part of the mic and the things in between i'm gonna like ignore at the moment i'm just gonna try and get the glasses okay also big disadvantage is the fact that my t-shirt color is always the same as my background color this makes it unnecessarily difficult to rotoscope out but anyway let's say this was a good good enough selection from here i'm going to do a track backward and forward and then reverse kind of thing so by default magic mask is going to do an amazing job in like detecting things but at some point the hand will go away if i can show that as an example like how to fix that that would be great let me just check if i have any messages or anything And honestly, there isn't a problem in this one anyway. But if there was a problem, I could show what I had understood about it. Basically, you go to that point where there is a problem, right? You do your correction, then you go one frame behind just to fix that part, and then go reverse. So when you go one frame behind, you get this white color thing here, which is a keyframe. That's all I wanted to document. But right now, it is not giving me any opportunity to like sense a problem of any sort. Okay, so the rotoscoping is done. This is how it is looking and it's it's done a pretty decent job. Now how like if you want to add text behind what would you what would you do? Right? So you would firstly take this and make this as your media out. So now this merge node, if you move it around, you've basically done what you wanted to. Right. So if I want to add some text behind, I can come in here and say text node and we're gonna merge it in here. Oh, 3D? No, 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 not 3D. Just need the basic text, dude. Text plus. God. 
basic text again here we can add some text now this you want to put behind your subjects you want to take this and shift drag it here hold down shift and leave it add it in the connection and now you have this thing here you can move it around and do whatever you want that kind of brings me to the other thing that i want to talk about which is how do you animate text so i don't have a lot of time now so i'm going to be very very quick in uh, trying to explain how do you animate this text inside of so it is very complicated like animating text inside after effects is super simple but here it is pretty complicated i'm going to say from the start uh, having said that let's see how we can do that so you want to come into this inspector panel here with this some text which is behind right now i'm going to increase the size so you can see it properly and i'm going to take this to left so the anchor point is on the left now and you want to animate this so you want to come in and right click here and say character level styling so once that is done this thing here on the top called modifiers it becomes active once you've done that you want to come in here and click this thing here which shows that now you are animating things so the next step then is to select the characters that you want to animate so let's say i want to animate some at this point now with that selected you can go into shading and here you have opacity so you can bring the opacity down or up so i've fiddled with that so that's why i dropped a keyframe here i can go behind and i can take the opacity down so that will animate some and then towards here let's say i select text and i fiddle with the opacity so that gives me a keyframe and over here i can come in and make text zero so so like over here for these there is still a keyframe i'm going to select this and make it zero and now once you've done character level styling you can go in and change anything you want like you can transform basis characters over this so much to play with here i'm not going to go more into depth here animating text auto subtitles this is a great feature only thing you want to do is with your timeline you want to come into timeline and say where was it auto subtitle something oh my god can i find it can i find it is it in the edit page or in the cut page timeline um come on there's somewhere there is auto subtitles create subtitles from <laughs> create subtitles from audio this will automatically create subtitles from audio and from what i have seen like it did a good job so if i stop this and if it would to stop if you see the no 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 stop stop okay 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 we stopped so i'm going to come into video and if i can open this timeline here yeah you see this has done a pretty good job with subtitles here and it was fairly accurate like i would say more accurate than premiere but i was kind of mumbling things so it wasn't getting those things right but other than that other than that it was pretty good and getting things right so that was about subtitles auto resizing text this is something i have to still check out but this guy also today i'm going to give him a shout out his name is graphics machine he hasn't even given his name but his videos are super cool like he talks about one node which will allow you to like get like what was it what was it called inside after effects source rector type <laughs> inside after effects node tree organization again you can come into your fusion tab and gets very messy and stuff so you can come in here right click arrange tools to grid so then this will snap to grid which is important and you can come into um you can make a macro out of these which is something i'm still figuring out but you can come into add tool scale uh there was somewhere this navigator nonsense which is coming on the right side and i removed that i was very happy about it <laughs> show navigator so when this is on it just does this weird kind of thing i don't like it so options you remove navigator locked on stabilization and premiere pro relevance this one last thing i'm going to show the other day I just like just before starting this project i did this one more project where i need to do lock on lock on stabilization so the original sequence was if i go into my timeline the original sequence you want to look here was like this it was a, it was meant to be a hyperlapse and the images that were shot when i put it together as a sequence this is what was coming out and with just very simple few steps i got this as like locked on tracking so how do you do that you select the clip come into fusion you just add one tracker here 
okay once you add that tracker you're gonna get these two boxes like inside green outside green fix it to where you want to do want to have it okay and then you say track backward track forward and davinci resolve's tracker is so much better like so so much better than after fixes tracker it just is like a next level intelligence i feel uh, for magic mask and for tracking uh, rotoscoping and tracking i think i'm never gonna go to after effects again with davinci so once this tracking is done you're gonna get these keyframes nicely uh, only thing you want to do is come into operation you want to say match move and background only and then you can come in and scale if your edges are getting cropped or anything but this did a pretty good job so the final words premiere pro relevance for in the code edits now initially i was thinking after effects is going to retain its place because after effects is like very classic motion graphics stuff so if you have a project which only requires motion graphics there's no video element in it you don't need to like deal with footage then after effects still will be the king and also if there is like a psd slate situation i don't see a way where you can import psds as layers inside the inside fusion maybe there is i don't know so for that after effects is always going to be there but i was under the impression that maybe premiere pro will go out of my workflow kit because so many things inside davinci most of the things inside premiere can be done inside davinci and better in fact but like yesterday this uh, experience it maybe it's because of so much familiarity i have with premiere pro that yesterday's edit like these simple simple things like adding a mask and alpha mat and everything took way too long for me to figure out and i know that this is like an investment which later will uh, serve because then i can save those nodes in my bins and like you over reuse them as templates or whatever but right now premiere pro is going to be used for me very useful for me for in the code edits which like these daily edits and davinci is something i will keep working on throughout the week for the cutout video yeah, i've said a lot and i have this video has gotten a lot longer so thank you so much for being in the code i will catch you tomorrow